You're listening to audio from the Village Church, a community that's formed by the gospel and sent on God's mission, gathering weekly in the heart of downtown Hamilton, Ohio. For more information about the Village or to connect with us, you can find us online at myvillagechurch.com. Welcome to the Formed and Sent podcast. Uh, My name is Scott. With me today is Matt Tucker. Good to see you. And <laughs> I'm sure we're in different uh, orders, but my name the is other Michael one. Graham. I'm I'm in the top left. Thank you. But my name is Michael Graham, one of the pastors of the Village Church. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, we're all elders at the Village. Um, and this podcast, uh, vodcast, whatever this is, is um by the Village and for the Village. And we've not done one of these in a really long time. Um, a really long time. I think August was the August of Wow. 2019 was like the last time we actually sat down and recorded something. So, uh, yeah, it's been a while, but, uh, <laughs> I yeah, me too. Um, so it's a little bit different. Uh, we don't know, uh, there's a, a chance that at some point, uh, Wi-Fi or data goes out or we stutter or we sound like robots or something for a bit. And so we'll just go along with whatever, uh, this ends up looking like. So, um, <clears throat> today, uh, we wanted to talk a bit about um, ecclesiology, which is uh, essentially like the theology of the church, and uh, wanted to talk about that in the midst of uh, the way that we do church, um, not just us, but uh, every other church being so different right now in the wake of uh, coronavirus stuff, and so um, just wanted to, to talk about like why ecclesiology is so important, why our theology of the church, what we believe about it um, matters right now, maybe more um, than ever before. So, uh, I will, I will maybe pitch that to you guys as a blanket question. Why is our theology of the church, um, so important, uh, all the time, but, but maybe certainly right now. Um, I'll take a step. Go for it. I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, <clears throat> this past week, I, I was chatting with a church planter in Fairfield, Hamilton area, just came in from out of state getting settled and he's been asking us some questions or whatever and and so I had shot him a document like our bylaws and kicking some stuff around and and in that conversation we started chatting about it it was just through text but but I found myself saying the same thing that I always say to every church planter um, on on repeat it's well you know I I asked the question well how are you making decisions or how like how is your church being governed and some some other words and that would be like polity and just decision making and leadership structure and all that. Um, I told him, I said, I'm not sure where you stand. So we're like elder led, uh, you know, deacon served, member informed. So some of that stuff will spill out in in our bylaws. And, and so it just got into a conversation. And, and I found myself saying, well, well, uh, theology, what we believe to be most true uh, about God, shapes <laughs> everything else. <laughs> Was I glitching? Was I glitching? No, no, no. no. Matt and I are just are doing Morse code (laughs) between. My eyes are burning from this light. (laughs) You guys are terrible. So, is there any way we can get all the people off the screen except for me? (laughs) (laughs) Be less distracted. Yeah, just push the X in the uh, upper right hand corner. Anyway, just the idea that that theology builds uh, builds our governance and the way that we make decisions Mm. and the way that we're organized, and then that governance or ecclesiology. It builds culture, and it just always goes back to culture, and that flows downhill from theology, but culture is what carries the ship of the church no matter what, no matter where the waves crash, and so it's so important how we are organized, uh, each of us understanding our own roles from member, um, you know, to elder and, and everything in between, um, because it really is, it builds the culture that will carry through when things are crazy like they are now and when they're not. So, yeah. Is there, um, so you hit on like organization leadership, are there other facets of ecclesiology, like other theological aspects of the church that would fall underneath that besides those two things or? I think it does. It, I mean, I think ecclesiology speaks to membership, um, speaks to how we maybe gather as a church if we were gathering on a Sunday morning. Um, and so, 
more than ever too, I think it's just important because as everything else around us maybe feels different or looks different, I think knowing what, what we believe about the Bible and how it informs how we do all those things from church leadership, like you talked about with eldership to communication. And um, even as we gather in community with others, um, I think it's so important to know why we do that and what the Bible says about it. Because again, like I was saying earlier, everything else feels different. We have to know what needs to stay the same. And, and we can't just disengage. Everything is not on pause right now. Um, certain things matter and we have to know like what the Bible says about those things and how we can carry on in the midst of everything else feeling very different. Yeah. I mean, if your understanding of what the church is, is very much hinged to what you do or like how you do what you do and everything about how you do what you do is different now, then that honestly like creates a threat to what you think the church is. So like coronavirus or any other pandemic, other sort of persecution or, any outside pressure or force that might be mm-hmm. uh, negative or just change up in some way what you do all of a sudden, like then those things become a threat to the very existence of, you know, the local church. Yeah. Um, and so like there, that's a, a current thing, but also then like how you think about what do we do now in the midst of things being different? Like, how do you go forward? Are we stuck because we can't do the things that we've always done or, uh, can we still continue and thrive and survive and all that stuff despite, you know, having to do things a little bit differently? So, yeah. yeah. Mark, I was doing a little bit of research for this week and a pastor that we know, Mark Deaver says, uh, one of the primary ways God is known and seen is through the church. And so it's just so important how we continue on through this time, even though we might not be as visible, um, it still impacts so many people around us, neighbors we talk to. And when we talk to them about what we're doing or we talk to our own church members about what we're doing that that Mm -hmm. shapes the church now too and how they perceive it so it's just really important um i want to read this is a definition of the local church um it's from uh mark driscoll we have this in our um membership uh material the village gate material and some other things as well but i just want to read this as a as a definition of what we believe the the church is uh says that a, a local church is a covenant community of regenerated believers who confess Jesus as Lord. In obedience to scripture, they organize under qualified leadership, gather regularly for preaching and worship, observe the biblical sacraments of baptism and communion, are united by the spirit, disciplined for holiness, and scattered to fulfill the great commission uh, or fulfill the great commandment and the great commission as missionaries to the world for God's glory and their joy. So that's a... I mean, there's a ton of little things like packaged up into that one definition, but like we would say that's a, that's a fairly solid definition of a local church. And I love that because I know in that section, he talks about, you know, the, uh, and, and all of the research or whatever, there aren't many definitions of the church, which is like mm-hmm. an interesting thing. It's tough to make it succinct and include, yeah. you know, sacraments and, and all of the, the, the mission and, and all those things. So, yeah, I do love that definition. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you can't see how many, like, how many different things are tied to that that relate to, like, regular church life as we know it. And so how has, um, maybe not just even that one definition, but the way that we, we usually flesh those things out or what we believe about those individual things, how have those uh, little bits of theology shaped the way that, like, we have responded as a church, as the village church? Maybe the way that we've thought about things um, and maybe that's in contrast to what we've heard elsewhere or, you know, things that make us distinct or yeah, just how has our ecclesiology shaped the way we've responded to this stuff? Well, just as an example, I know even recently we've talked about um, communion still and hmm. obviously that's something we value as the church in general, especially when we meet, but also we have to figure out what it looks like as we don't regularly gather together. And so just as an example, you know, I think, Scott, you put together a one page on what that looks like as we are scattered, what the Bible says about it, and then how we might be able to still partake of that, even in, as a local family or as a, as a, a single person. And so that's, that matters as we, you know, want to do that certainly when the church is gathered, but also now when we're scattered. And that's just one example of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I th- and I think, you know, on that, that fateful Thursday when 
everything unraveled and we're like, Oh, what? And you know, the news was coming in and it was changing minute by minute. And, and you know, we, we, well, let's, what does the, the gathering look like this week? Well, let's do this. And, and instead of preaching, Matt, you were supposed to preach that week. Um, we, we did like a discussion and then the following week, well, what if we did discussions? And, and I just remember thinking like how we respond to this, it really, it really, to your point uh, in the setup, Scott, was it really does, if we're going to do something completely different um, in the way that we, for example, sit under the word, and let's do a roundtable discussion week after week after week after week, and we didn't know it was going to be months at that, at that time, yeah. then, well, why wouldn't we do that when the church is gathered? And so just, just asking a question like that, you're like, wait, hold on, do, do I think that's better? Well, and you can say, well, attention spans and screens, versus, but, but like, but it's still true. Like, you know, just because somebody shows up um, in a gathering doesn't mean that they're, um, that they're paying attention or that they could regurgitate what you're saying. Yeah. Just like when they watch, watch a gathering on a screen, it doesn't mean that. And so that's just one simple way. And then really that spills out into everything that we do, well, groups and, and how are we um, communicating and just all those things. And so that was just one way to, like, to challenge us to say, well, what we do now really is a reflection of what we believe is the essence of what the church is gathered or scattered, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. And we, I mean, beat the drum of gathered and scattered every single week, all the time. You know, we talk about that. And so gathering is super important for us, but we, I mean, this is really basic, but we don't believe the church is a building. We don't believe the church is even a service or a meeting time or a thing that we do. Um, we believe the church is the people. And so I think even that like shapes, I think freed us to think about on that fateful Thursday, what we were going to do a little bit differently. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I don't think any of us, we weren't fighting, like we weren't fighting to preserve what we had always done the way we'd always done it. Um, we were thinking about what's best for our people and how can we, how can we continue to sit under the word? How can we continue to, to carry forward the, the things that are important to us, the values that are important to us, the marks of a church um, in a way that is good and safe for the people. And so that meant we were pretty open-handed about, you know, if we were going to meet all together or not. And when we found out that, you know, spring break was going to be a three week long affair, then like, okay, then we're, we're just not going to, you know, do that this Sunday. And it stunk, but it wasn't like the, again, it wasn't like the church was threatened, you know, because yeah. we weren't able to get together. I think it's helpful, and this is not propping us up or slamming other churches, but because we're not attractional, um, and we emphasize, by God's grace, hopefully the right things in, in regards to discipleship and community, and we give kind of even amounts of weight to the gathering, to other things, just because we didn't gather on Sunday mornings that it hasn't killed us. Mm -hmm. I can imagine if that was like the thing, and that was like, you know, all the lights and all the stuff, and all of a sudden you take that out, that could be really detrimental to a church. Mm -hmm. And by God's grace, I think so far we've been healthy. Um, we've emphasized relationships, community, um, discipleship. And so by God's grace, I think we're carrying on in those things and taking out the Sunday gathering. Though we still have one, it's, it's, it's very different, but it, it, that's not like something that's like all of a sudden crushing us. Yeah. So you're saying that our, uh, one of the pillars that we stand on is not a, a worship experience? I would say that probably. Yeah. Like, honestly, I mean, that, that is a real thing. That, yeah. that if it is about the experience, if it is about a, a time or all of the show, gosh, then I'm sure, um, then I'm sure your live streams look really, really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but the beauty of it is, yeah, like we get to acknowledge that the Jesus came, that he died, that he ruled, uh, that, that he uh, resurrected, that he ascended, that he rules and reigns, that he sends the spirit and the spirit illuminates the word. And so the elders, we get to bring direction and clarity, and we get to do what we've done all along, which is equip the saints for the work of ministry. And then the church is the church, and the church does the things that the church does. And that's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. And so for us, I mean, as, and again, you can answer this real practically or pragmatically, but that is a uh, dem demonst demonstrative of a high view of the Trinity that we believe that the Holy Spirit is comp competent and capable to to do the work, uh, and we get to cultivate that, and, and it's a low view of self, um, but, but I won't say that, that we're not tempted. Mm. Do we need to be more present? Do I need, 
am I, do I need to have all the answers? Or, or do we have to curate everything for our groups or for teams or for, and so all those things are questions, but it's at the end of the day, the, the same reason why we don't take ourselves too seriously when we gather is because we take God very seriously mm-hmm. and we trust his competent hands and our clumsy hands to continue to be the church um, as, as we have been. So. Yeah. I yeah, I think of not even just our, like the three of us, the four of us with Adam, like our response to things, but just the church in general, like, because everyone else at the village is just as much as part of a uh, part of the church or whatever. And so like our uh, bridge team that does student stuff and k and some of our serve teams and groups. And I just feel like um, by and large, like community has been the thing for 10 and a half years that even if you visit once or twice, by and large, most people, hey, like, we feel really welcomed here. We feel like, you know, that this truly is like a, a family feel or a community feel or whatever. And I feel like that's translated into the way that like the whole church has shifted into this as well, um, to where it's not just, you know, the three or four of us that are trying to steer things or make things happen, whatever, but it's all of us getting to like together step back and say, hey, okay, well, like, it's not just how can we keep doing this thing um, or how do we translate this thing into some digital format? But man, how do we care for people right now? How do I care for these students? How do I care for these kids? How do I, as our team, how do we, how do we take the mission and purpose um, to connect people with the church? And like, how do we do that? Uh, even though we, we can't greet them and open a door for them on Sunday, yeah. stuff like that, which I just think is really cool. Like our, the, the church as a whole knows that the church is the people and the mission is to make disciples it's it's people and so i feel like that's just translated well mm-hmm. into the way the church as a whole has responded to things which yeah. has been cool yeah and to piggyback off that i think our ecclesiology informs also that it's not the pastors that do the work but it's right. the the pastors that equip the saints and how hard would it be right mm-hmm. now for the four of us to try to check in with everybody all the time and make sure they're good we, we do try to do that but by god's grace we have teams that also carry the weight we have groups leaders that carry the weight and it's, it would be overwhelming right now if the three or four of us tried to do everything in this kind of shifty weird time frame yeah yeah absolutely. um are there ways that like our ecclesi- ecclesiology has been like tested and maybe it's like it's a personal thing or um maybe just in your sphere of oversight or collectively are there ways that we've been refined or challenged in what we believe um because of how we're having to change the way we practice things right now. I mean, I'll say it, yeah, it, it, just in, in some of the examples we already brought up, but it, it forces clarity and just um, making sure that we're defining what success is mm-hmm. as the church and, and within our, each of our roles, um, sustainability is, um, is the end game um, what, what are the three B's, butts, budgets, something else, right? You know, um, it is the goal uh, when, when things resume and we get back, gosh, we still have the same amount of people as we did. When, is that the goal? Or is the goal that we would, that we have, would have added 50 people? Um, no, no, it's, it's not that. And, and if, if people don't come back, uh, or if they come back more than we had, we, we gather together. The goal is, is God worship people growing in grace and knowledge, um, trusting God and, and enjoying him forever. And so the, the way that we're challenged is to think that we're the ones that were, were ever the ones that did any of that. And so yeah. we get to continue to like, okay, what's sensible? And with a mindfulness to not uh, overwhelm. And, and we've, how many times have we talked about an additional Zoom call or an additional, I mean, even today, an additional yeah. something because it's yeah. like, well, we, we need to, it's like, no, maybe we need to, and, and we just don't know. We'll swerve left and right on all those things. But, but the goal is, is God worship. And that's true when we're gathered and normal. And that's true in this transition, when we transition back. And, and if that's the goal, then we get to take a deep breath and remember that we're human um, and God's not. Yeah. Yeah. I think another way it's been tested, I agree with that, Michael, is um, are we feeding ourselves personally? Um, it's easy, I think, to kind of get a, a bit of a spoonful of God at a Sunday gathering. It's easy to get a spoonful of God at a community group and all those things are vital and important, but 
all of a sudden now it's like, man, when we don't have the, the Sunday gathering experience that we used to know, and maybe we're, it doesn't feel as connected in community group, gosh, it, it's so important to know that we're able to feed ourselves. We're able to dig into the word ourselves. We're able to pray on our own and not just kind of bump into everyone else that's doing this and kind of be propped up. I think that that's huge. And that's, it's revealed in this time in a way that maybe it wouldn't have other times. Totally agree. I mean, I think there's elements of community that we'll talk about in a few minutes that like you can't just rely on bumping into people on Sunday mornings to, Hey, like, how you doing? Hey, let's talk now. We're all happen to be here or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I think the same thing is true for personal discipleship. And if you're leaning on, yeah, gathering together with the saints or things being a particular way to feed you, man, like, uh, maybe what this time has done is like squeezed out or revealed something that's al- already been there, always been there, been there for a long time that now is just coming to light. You know, like if if really your personal discipleship with Jesus hasn't been like affected very much, um, then yeah, like that's probably a thing, you know what I mean? Like whether it's reading or carving out time for prayer or whatever, like I'm sure for a lot of us anyway, like our schedules are different. Um, and, and so like, if you've not thought at all about (laughs) how you are seeking after Jesus in the season with things being so different, then it's probably something that's not even on our radar. Right. So I don't know. Uh, Other thoughts around things, ways that we've been tested, refined, challenged. I know for me, I just like even personally, I shared this with you guys, but I noticed for myself as things are different and it's easier to kind of feel like, like just less happy or excited. And I'm going to share this, but like I've, I've tempted to like look forward or, or prop food up or a meal or a Netflix show and all of a sudden I'm kind of like highlighting that as my joy. And I think that, you know, through all the stuff that we're going through, those things in my heart have been revealed. What I really look forward to in a day, what really sustains me, is it, you know, a nice day or is it food or is it whatever? And I think for me, just what the question was, I guess, like how has ecclesiology um, been maybe tested in that time? Gosh, like for me again, personal, is, is God enough? Is, is my reading of the word enough? is is praying by myself enough and certainly we hope to get back into regular rhythms and healthy you know gatherings and, and all that but man like that's for me it's been refining for sure to to, to say man i saw him tammy last night and i think i'm discouraged with myself sometimes because i want to think that my relationship with god is stronger than it really is and all of a sudden through this time of just being tested and and feeling different i think man I, there's just room for, to grow. I, I think that I trust in those things more than I'd like to admit. And so this has just been another time. I don't know if that answers your question, but it's been revealing for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely an element of this isn't just a, who do we believe we are communally, but it's yeah. who do we believe we are also on an individual level because we are part of the church collective. And so yeah, the same way, like uh, around not being able to do things the same way um, and, and sometimes not knowing what those other new ways are or, yeah. you know, whatever. Like, I think it's, it's definitely squeezed out of me, like revealed, um, like just some performance driven stuff. Where it's like, okay, I, I can't be face to face with these people at a coffee shop. I can't like no. chat with the baristas and check in to see how they're doing. I can't, you know, there's so much of like just daily normal life. Yeah. Um, that I find value in and that I love doing um, and with just the swerve of all this stuff and not being able to do that stuff or having that stuff be just distant or more at arm's length or whatever. Um, it's definitely like, I, I, it came out of me in like anxiety and frustration and like yeah. not being okay with not knowing what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's like, ah, it's okay for me to, to not know what I'm maybe I'm supposed to be doing right here this very hour or, if I'm not producing the same stuff or as much stuff, like, like that, that's okay. You know, like it, there's my status before the Lord, my value to the church. And I'm not even talking about as a pastor, but just my value, like as a disciple of Jesus in the midst of the bigger body is not dependent on the, the number of conversations I have or the quality of those or the, you know, knowing what I'm supposed to do all of that stuff. It's, you know, I, I get to 
I, I get to be okay with like not performing or performing differently, you know, mm-hmm. right now. And so that, that squeezes out of me, uh, Hey, like, am I, have I subtly been thinking for a long time that like my involvement in some things or the way that I do things like, man, is like, that is where I find my righteousness, you know, in some way. So yeah, challenged in that way, I think on a personal level, which is good. It's sanctifying. Yeah. It, it brings me, draws me to, to rest in Christ for that instead. It's great. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we kind of touched on this already in terms of like mission and purpose or whatever, but like, you know, why the, why the church kind of even exists in the first place or what we're striving for or driving for as a church. Um, and so like attached to ecclesiology, which is the theology of the church is missiology, which is theology of mission. Um, uh, has the mission changed or maybe, maybe define like, what is the mission of the church first? And then talk about if that's, been altered at all in the current state of things i think i would say that first of all the mission for us is to make mature and multiply disciples you know we get that from the end of matthew and that's jesus's challenge to us and i would say the mission hasn't changed it's still that i think what it maybe has changed is how we go about doing that a little bit um it maybe doesn't look like we're out and about evangelizing or we're meeting inside of a, a family's home and talking about the gospel so that maybe looks a little different, but we're still called to do those things. It's just we have to figure out other ways to do those things, you know. Yeah. So yeah, biggest things. Yeah, I mean, has the mission changed? Like, absolutely not. Um, have the methods changed? Sure. Like, yeah. that's um, and and to be fair, that's what that's what uh, presses against traditionalism even when we're not quarantined in our home, it's, it's being aware of the culture around us and saying, ah, oh, like it's, we, we don't start with pragmatism. We start with, with uh, living a life for God's glory through the work of the sun, the presence of the spirit and the heralding of the word and all those things. And, and our aim is that others would live a life of God glory as well. Um, and so everything else kind of flows from that and making maturing, multiplying disciples, all that. But, um, but the, the methods definitely change. Yeah. And, and I'm not comfortable enough to say, here's the answer. Uh, because, man, that's, that's one thing that I'm like, gosh, what, what does that look like long term? Um, so it's, it's the same mission. It's the same message. But the, mission, uh, the methods certainly change. it. And just one kind of beautiful diversity of that is, you know, I'm in some threads with Acts 29 uh, as a region. Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and then as a, as a in the Midwest, kind of eleven states, and then even national stuff. Um, and and everybody, I mean, it, it's so different across the board. You know, uh, what's preaching look like? What's what do the Sunday gatherings look like? Uh, do they do they look like anything at all? Um, and so just the diversity, and I think that's all beautiful, and that's great, and it doesn't have to look like it always has, and it's not just plug and play. And and I love that people are not like, well, that's the way to do it, because no one knows. I mean, the church doesn't know how to be on mission in a, a human context that it's been on for thousands of years. We're yeah. still trying to figure that. Out. So uh, a month in, we have we don't have it figured out. No. Uh, but but the mission hasn't changed. But the methods, absolutely, um, absolutely, they've changed. I think the beautiful thing is like even hitting on like the means of the mission, which we would say certainly God accomplishes his mission to glorify himself by making, maturing, multiplying disciples, building his kingdom, all of that. He, he uses the church through that. So he uses his people, but uh, through the proclamation of the gospel, through the word, you know, the preaching of the word. And I mean, that's, that's part of the great commission is uh, baptizing people, but also then teaching them to observe all that Jesus commanded. Um, he gave us the Holy spirit, uh, to indwell us and live inside of us to not just convict us of sin, but also to work through us in the midst of other people. And so, man, like we get to, like, even though the mission hasn't changed and, but the methods have changed, the means also haven't changed either. So it's not like, mm-hmm. even though we are uh, disconnected in some ways from one another and from other people, um, man, none of those other things are, we still can, proclaim the gospel we can still be in the word and also share the word with other people um we can 
we have the Holy Spirit in us and he's not confined to, you know, a house yeah. <laughs> right now. Yeah. He's allowed to go wherever he wants to. And so um, the, the, the means of the mission are even still just the same as they were before. So we're not any, we're not any less equipped or we're not cut off from anything that we need to actually accomplish the mission, even though those methods have changed, which is huge. That's yeah. a really big deal. That is. It's really good. What does it look like? then in the midst of, you know, quarantine, shelter in place stuff, like what, uh, what, what does mission look like? What would you want, you know, not uh, all of Acts 29 and every other pastor of the church, but like for us as the village, what does it look like for us to be mindful of mission and still carry on in that despite the current context of things? I'll say first and foremost, Um, We trust Jesus and rest in him. That's the beginning of mission. Um, And that's tough. That's not, I'm not saying that from a, from a, from a King's pedestal. (laughs) I'm saying that from a place of like, that's the first thing we get to do is we get to get to rest in the finished work of Jesus. No matter what swirls around us, posture of heart is God's got this. And it might be, anxiety inducing and it might be you know financial like all the things uh stir crazy whatever we get to start by by putting ourselves at his feet and resting in him and we get to um we get to be neighborly Mm -hmm. and that means that we get to uh not spread a virus (laughs) you know um it means we get to be good citizens uh and i know that that's you know, a, a spectrum in there. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're going to be good citizens. Um, we're going to be loving of our neighbors. Um, and, and in that, I, I say we get to be understanding of both sides of the spectrum. There is a spectrum um, and what it looks like to be neighborly. And so we don't get to d- dismiss or, or make someone feel stupid because of their perspective. We get to listen. And whether that's in social uh, media stuff or in, in real life interaction, gosh, we shouldn't be dismissive. We shouldn't shut people down. We should be, we should be good listeners and understanding and caring and nurturing and kind. So, mm-hmm. so none of that has to do with Jesus uh, other than the fact that, uh, that he loves us in spite of us. And so um, then we get to the other things around that. We get to prioritize discipleship uh, in our spheres, start with ourselves. If we have a family, we get to make sure that we are discipling our family. Um, and, and man, I, I would say scattering with the village is a part of that. Um, you know, showing up, making sure that our rhythms are uh, pointing our family and ourselves to Jesus. Um, gather with the church on Sunday because that's that's an okay thing to do. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know, a lot more stuff in there. Um, be kind to your neighbors. Uh, and I, I think in, in just a second, maybe I'll, I'll talk about some of my tensions in that. But. I think what's amazing is we live in a time where we've had the iPhone or technology like Skype and it feels like we've had it forever. We've probably had it for what, maybe 15 years, which in res- regards to all of time, it's nothing. And it's just by God's grace, I think that we get to use technology even to record this podcast in a way that carries out God's mission. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable that by, you know, this happens. And I know the stuff like this has happened over the course of time, but for us, we get to, to go through this, being able to see each other's faces still. And I think for, for me carrying out mission and for us carrying out mission, it's God's grace that we get to still hear each other's voices. We get to still see each other's faces. We get to, though we're not physically present, still be an encouragement to one another to see your expression, to hear, how you communicate the gospel to hear someone right here in front of you pray for another person. That's, that's one of the ways we have to be on mission. And that's just a valuable grace during this time, not a valuable grace, but it's a blessing from God that we get to use this. I I also think the other thing, and this has been encouraging to me recently, and I've tried to be very careful with how I use this is through saying I'm praying for somebody. I know a lot of times we, the cliche is I'll pray for you. And I know then it's easy to walk off and never do that. I'll say that for myself. And what I do when I get off the phone call is I say, man, I, I genuinely, I'm going to pray for you. And I, I, I genuinely mean that right when we get off here, I'm going to pray for you. And that's the way we get to carry out God's mission again is to just lift them up. And though we might not be able to physically help them with a task, 
that we might not be able to give them a hug like we would love to. Gosh, prayer is a valuable way to, to, to further God's mission. We were on a walk yesterday and there's a, a woman that we know in our neighborhood that doesn't know Christ. And, you know, we maintain the six feet and all that stuff. But at the end of that walk, we, we asked her, we said, hey, is there anything that we could be praying for you about? And she was like, oh, no, no. And like, well, and her daughter just broke her arm. So she's like, well, maybe did you pray for that? And so we said, we genuinely mean that we're, we're going to pray for you tonight. And so that's one of the things we tried to, you know, we didn't share the whole gospel, but we let her know, gosh, we care for you and we'll be praying for you. And so those are just simple ways that we might be able to continue to carry on the mission. Yeah. And last night in our community group, we talked a lot about um, like the fact that we get to intercede on behalf of other people, like before the Lord as uh, kind of a, a royal priesthood, um, mm -hmm. you know, what uh, Peter talks about in first Peter two or whatever. And um, man, that's what we get to do for uh, certainly one another, but also for our neighbors. Like we get to intercede for them. We get to pray for them and also pray to obviously pray to the Lord on their behalf that, they might come to know him through all yeah. that stuff. And so, um, I mean, the reality is like, <clears throat> even though we are cooped up in some sense, Matt, you talk about going for a walk. Like I've heard from so many people, Hey, like I've seen my neighbors more than yeah. I have ever <laughs> before. Like yeah. literally like cultivating new relationships with people in the neighborhood because, you know, again, you can stay six feet apart, but still walk around the block. And a lot yeah. of more people are doing that. So I think there is an opportunity to plant some relational seeds to get to know people. But man, like, like everybody uh, in this season is probably longing for something. And if they don't know Jesus, chances are they think they're longing for something that they really don't, or that longing is deeper and only to be satisfied in Christ. And so just to be mindful of when we do like say, Hey, can we be praying for you? And, and what are those things? And, but like just thinking of how even in our ask and even in our curiosity about getting to know people, how can we in our minds be thinking, how is Jesus good news to this neighbor right now? And I think we should be thinking about that in general. Like this is such a different context for the, the gospel to, to go forth in a pandemic, just a really weird thing. And Michael, you alluded to a spectrum of responses to all of this stuff and where people land and how people think about things. And, um, and, and all of that stuff, like if fear on either side um, or fury on either side is the thing that's coming out and there's something down at the root, like, man, there is good news that's, that's needed in, on both of those sides. And so what does it look like for us as a church um, to offer good news to, to, to those people across the spectrum? Like, it's just a, it's, and that's not just as a thought experiment, but genuinely mm -hmm. like, how, how is Jesus good news to the person that's freaking out about the fact that government is overreaching everything or the fact that uh, people without masks touching their face are going to kill everybody or, you know, like whatever it happens to be financial. Like how, I mean, and, and I'm not downplaying the concerns of any of that stuff, but I'm saying uh, like those concerns can exist and there can be in that midst a greater trust and dependence on the steadfastness and sovereignty of the Lord um, man, that puts all those other things like where they're supposed to be in their place. And so yeah. how is, how is Jesus good news for our neighbor right now? I think it's just a really, it's a good opportunity for us to be able to ask right now. And there's lots of opportunity to meet those neighbors going for a walk around the block. So I, I think what's cool about that is, and we've asked this, you know, we, we try to ask this on repeat over the years, but you know, as we're a, a decade old as a church, we say, man, if we were just coming into the city now, knowing what we know now, how would we engage or, or as we encourage people to think like missionaries, imagine you're going to a, you know, a far off country. How would you get ready for that? You know, well, well you have that responsibility here. It's almost like you're forced to like, okay, so we have to learn a new language. Mm -hmm. What is that like? You know, like uh, we have to understand uh, the cultural sweeps and the cultural fears and, and, and what um, idolatries exist within the community as Paul you know, confronts those in Athens and other places. And so it is a really good time to be introspective and we get to like on a, on a church level, um, but also as individual missionaries, how do we engage? And, and again, no one knows there's not a right answer, but it's a dependent thoughtfulness, uh, faithfulness to be bold and, and to ask Matt. Uh, I love that Matt, that you're now actually going to pray for me when you tell me that you're going to pray for me. <laughs> uh, but, Been lying but, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but but the boldness to do that because that takes like oh man that's vulnerable and they're gonna know that I'm 
you know, and so like, we just get to say, man, if a missionary showed up here and now today in this context, what would they be doing to advance the mission to those specifically uh, who, who don't know Jesus? You know, it's, it's not like a, uh, an answer to be solved. It's, it's creativity and faithfulness to, to use the gifts, um, resources, relationships, influence that God's given us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. What about community? So another aspect, obviously, of, of the church isn't just the, the mission, make mature, multiply disciples, but also just, like, what does that look like within the church itself? Like, to, to care for one another as a family, um, community is a part of that. Is there, how has that been affected in the midst of not being able to gather and all that? Like, what's, what does community look like now? I'll take a step. I'll say just in brief, like, presence is powerful. We know that um, bodily or otherwise. And so uh, no matter how many video calls and all those things, there is a void. There should, this should bring a void in your life that cannot be remedied Mm -hmm. by Mm -hmm. a conference call. That doesn't mean that we just, do we just say, well, okay. (laughs) Like I'll just wait till we can get back. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm hunkering in, you know, I'm here um, but, but on the other hand, I mean, I, I've encouraged people who are, who are investing and who live their lives poured out for others to use this as, as a sweet reprieve mm-hmm. to just rest, mm-hmm. just trust Jesus. Don't bear the weight of every human on the entire planet. Just, you know what I mean? And, and then yeah. other people who might recluse by nature and use this as an, and so it's like, it's not, it's not, you know, here's the answer. It's, mm-hmm. it's a mindfulness that there should be a void but we get to fill that void and we get to check on uh, the elderly and the lonely and, and we get to care for them and we get to show up when our community group is gathered and we get, you know, we get to do those things and we get to gather, like, like I said, on Sundays when the church is gathered, we gather with us because there's just a sweetness. That's, that's why we don't just shoot something out at, at 10 PM whenever Scott gets done writing, you know, putting the code in, we do that at 10 30 so that we can gather together as the church and, and just know that, that not only is Liz Knudsen or Matt or Justin or Tanya or whoever uh, singing a song, but collectively in our hearts, the church together is singing that song together. And that's a sweet yeah. thing. So. I agree. That's for sure. It would be so easy to think I'll connect again when, when this is over. And like, it's it's easy because it feels like there's no repercussions right now maybe um what i think is sad is that there are repercussions and when we get back together what we don't want to feel like is strangers who all of a sudden have come out of a cave after x amount of months and be like oh hey you are and and oh that person and hey i I don't know anything about you after five months and that would be such a miss for us not just for our own consciences, just but for caring for others well. And so I think that, yeah, like Michael, all the things you said about connecting in those regular spots, but then we get to be creative as well. And just as an example, like Macy had a birthday, you know, a week ago in the Wallens, just pull up in our driveway and like saying happy birthday and they just dropped off a gift. And I think, you know, that's not the only way to be creative, but we get to still do stuff like that. We get to celebrate, um, you know, milestones in people's lives. We get to still drop something off at people's doors and be mindful of what the state says and how to obey that. But at the same time, how to still be a blessing in other ways to go above and beyond. I think it takes a lot more planning. We were trying to make some food for somebody and it takes forever to get like the right amount of food. It feels like, like we order online and pick up and there's always (laughs) substitutions and there's never the stuff you need. Mm. And so it is more difficult for sure. I think to connect in community, to be a blessing, to physically serve somebody but we still get to just think through that. We just get to pray about it. We get to be intentional in the ways that we do that. Yeah. I think if there are elements of, uh, you know, as you survey, as you survey, like what regular church life has looked like, if there are elements that you believe now are dosable and dispensable and you don't need them right now and you mm-hmm. can set them on the shelf, then there is absolutely no reason for you to come back to them once things go back to normal. I mean, that's just the, that's the reality. Like either you think that they are important Mm -hmm. and that they matter or you don't. Um, And community is one of those things. And uh, I mean, it's, it is kind of true that like introverts get to have uh, a bit of a laugh right now. (laughs) 
<laughs> at the at the extrovert. There is no no passing of the peace that uh, that that can be had at the current yeah. moment. Um, <laughs> so rejoice, all introverts. But like, man, uh, like if if you consider yourself an introvert, you're not healthy if you're not connecting with other people. Like I don't care who you are, and just like extroverts, I would say yeah. you're not healthy if you're always around other people and you're never like by yourself in solitude. Like both of those things are important. Um, yeah. And so for us just to, to consider like, man, what are we willing to, are the things that we're willing to give up? Um, and if so, why would we come back to those things later? Why, why are these things important? Why would I say that these things matter? Um, yeah. And so just in terms of like rest and this season, I know can, it should be like, a, I think a season of rest in some sense where we aren't as busy, like, uh, and that's not true for everybody. Some people are busier than ever. Uh, my wife is one of those people <laughs> trying to teach three kids and mother five and all of that stuff. Like throughout the week, that's, she's more exhausted now than she ever has been. Um, so some people are busier. Some people aren't, uh, a lot of people aren't. And so for us just not to see, uh, not to see this period of rest as like a fake rest, you know, like, like we ought to find rest in God's people. Like community ought to be a life-giving place for us. And the regular rhythms of discipleship ought to be life-giving to us. And if for some reason we think that resting right now looks like disconnecting from the Lord or disconnecting from the people of God, then there's a, a fundamental misunderstanding, I think, of what rest is and, and what your place in those things are and what the purpose of those things really are in your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. We're a body, right? And the, the yeah. God says that the body, like if the eye can't say to the whatever else, I don't need you. I was listening to a podcast the other day and the guy was talking about how we see God more clearly and more fully through those around us. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't have the discipline of something else or someone else exemplifies this in a greater way. And when we don't connect, we, we in a way see God less fully because of that. And that's a sad thing to miss out on right now. So yeah. we have to continue to do that. Yeah. But to Michael's point at the very beginning, like, man, it's not going to be like it was. There's going to yep. be a void there. My fa- I come from a family of huggers. And so like, <laughs> I miss, <laughs> I miss hugging people. Yep. Um, sorry if you're not, and I've you know, assaulted you with hugs before, but um, <laughs> man, like it's going to be even weird, even thinking about coming back into regular get and knowing like people aren't going to be jiving with, uh, Hugs, certainly probably not even handshakes or whatever. When we first get back together, it's going to be weird. But um, man, there is a there is just a, a tangible in the flesh component of community that we just can't have. But that doesn't mean we we set it on the shelf and and say we don't need it until we get it yeah. back there. So, um, are there anything in particular anything in particular around community? Uh, you, we've kind of hit on this stuff already, but like any other encouragements or painting a picture of what. Uh, living in community should look like at this point in time that you haven't said yet? I would just say that that I I have had this tension of uh, two words that sound exactly the same, um, withdrawal and withdrawal, (laughs) withdrawal and withdraw, um, not knowing where where it fits. But I think in my mind, it's like, okay, like I'm not, I'm not to be around anyone. (laughs) <laughs> and then it's like, and then you hear like, oh, you know, care for people. And, and then like, I, I have, you know, I, I know that there um, have been uh, uh, fire pit opportunities with distance and, and all that. And it's like, okay, like in my mind, it was just like, oh, and we, you know, we too, we made, made a meal for somebody this week. And like two weeks ago, I'm like, nope. <laughs> like like it's it just, you know, care, for, care for your neighbor. Uh, don't go out of your house. It's like, the confusion around that. And so just for me to identify, yeah, I, I think I've been confused by that. Mm-hmm. And into my mind, I don't know if I've tricked myself, but just like, okay, there are ways to, and so like, uh, I don't know, just like exploring what, what is real <laughs> and what, yeah. like how our ways, yeah. You know, stay in your house. Hey, go for bike rides. Like what, what am I to do? And, and so it's just been kind of a, a I mean, if anybody tells you that they haven't figured out, uh, a month into a, a life that we've never seen, just no one has it figured out. That's okay. Um, but, but you shouldn't be to your guys' point withdrawing and neglecting the things that at one point mattered 
uh, now you have an opportunity for them not to matter or an excuse, then they never really mattered. And so yeah. that's just a sweet thing to be mindful of. Um, yeah, press in where you can or whatever. So. Yeah. Uh, I would say, I think it's easy for those of us who, and I would yeah, even put myself in this category at times, like uh, to, to be around and be physically present um, but not let your guard down to like not be known. It's, it's easy to fool yourself into thinking that you're being vulnerable or that you are known by people when you can be around people a lot and you're like, other people see you and you're like, Oh, see, like I'm in community or whatever. And then when you're really not able to be in the same living room and you're just on a, a screen or whatever, or maybe not at all. Um, I think it's harder to fool yourself in that sense. And so I would just say like, like certainly participate uh you know dial in on sunday mornings at 10 30 and hop onto the zoom calls in your community group or join a group if you're not part of one yet all those things like be present for those things but um uh, whether it's it's in a, a group zoom call or whether it's in some other avenue or venue like make sure that you're bearing your soul to people and that you're known by other people in the church and that you're also pursuing the hearts of other people too um because that's the, I mean, community is not simply like just being in a room together, like talking about external, you know, surface level things. It's like, it's about bearing your heart and, and knowing each other, being known and making Christ known in your life. And so um, find ways to do that. If that's not happening, uh, find someone or someone's to, to do that with. And that doesn't have to be a Zoom call. It can be a phone call. It can be, if you feel comfortable, uh, you know six foot fire pit yeah. thing if you want like uh at your own risk can do whatever but um <laughs> man just make sure that you are not um allowing yourself to ghost away uh during the course of this because it's it's not good for you it's not healthy so cool um is there man just in general um i know we've hit on some specific things but like overarching in terms of Want to speak to the village? Um, how can, uh, how do we want the the church to embrace this season as maybe a season, certainly of challenges, but maybe of opportunity um, that we can step into? Like, are there ways you would encourage the the village church to see right here and right now, and to step into that? Um. Man, that's tough. I think we've talked about some things. I think first of all, just to not view this as an accident. You know, God, though, you know, he, he allowed this to happen. We can say that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, this is not like caught him by surprise. And so how maybe the first thing to say is for each of us, how does God want us to use this time for ourselves personally and for others? Um, and it will look different. It will be harder to figure those things out. But maybe that's the first question is, you know, what, what do I get to do? How do I get to lead myself? How do I get to lead and serve others? And then pray about how God would have you to then go from there. What thoughts he brings to mind. Think about the people he brings to mind. Think about the things at your disposal. Um, I think about generosity, and that's not just in regards to dollars and cents, but that's in regards to yeah, time. That's in regards to maybe there's something you can do and get out and, and yeah, get food for somebody. Or, you know, I, I don't know all the things that we might be able to suggest, but that's the first step in this is to just to, to think intentionally about that yeah i mean i think um if imagine this went on for a year is are you cultivating your own discipleship in a way that would create the space for you to be uh, a more mature faithful effective disciple and missionary in a year from now because again, all this that we talk about is, is indicative of what's, what's coming to the surface. You might realize that your whole relationship with God was 80 minutes on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And if it was, then, then you will drift. Uh, and if you lead a family or you're a part of a family, your family will drift. Um, if it's weird when you come back in six months or a year, uh, not that it will be that long, but let's say it was a year and, and oh, the church is meeting on Sundays. Would your kids grow up in a way where they're like, oh, wh why are we doing this on Sunday? Well, son, that's when the church meets. Um, 
or or would you say if, if you're by yourself or whatever like ah oh, this is inconvenient because that was my day to, to get the chores done or whatever like just think about the rhythms uh, daily weekly monthly that you're that you're putting in place and I mean don't fear don't be anxious um, but also don't be callous if you work um, if you work like you still have to leave it would be easy for you to look at, at others and say well they get to stay home and what now the government's giving them money you know like don't let that grow callous in, in you. And on the other side, if you're not working, uh, man, breathe, uh, take space and make sure that your identity is not wrapped up in any of those things. But yeah, I mean, just the big idea is, are you doing the faithful, fruitful, effective work of being God's son or daughter in this context? And is it sustainable? Because I think that really is a good, good reflection question to say, um, man, our, our weeks have been a little wonky and maybe I need to tighten some things up, um, and get back to some regular rhythms that mm -hmm. will sustain me, keep me nourished by the vine. Because otherwise, man, you, you'll, you'll get, grow brittle and, mm -hmm. and, and die. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If you stretch this out, whatever you're doing right now, over the course of a couple months, a couple years, like, like, what would you get? I mean, because no matter how like how short or long we're in this, and this comes comes back to our ecclesiology is that uh, Jesus is the one who is is building the church. He's the foundation of the church. He's building the church. The Holy Spirit is active in knitting us together and giving us what we need to continue on mission to make and mature and multiply disciples to live in community. And so, like, man, whether it's it's uh, two months or whether it's two years, you know that we can't do whatever. Um, man, we, like, we should still be experiencing the, the conviction and the sanctification and uh, new, new life in Christ and uh, maturity and all of those. We should still be experiencing those things mm -hmm. as a body of believer. Um, we should be finding, having to find ways to baptize people um, because yeah. people are coming to know Jesus uh, in our homes or in our neighborhoods, but we don't have a baptistry or whatever to go take them to, or you know what I mean? Like, like those things should continue to happen because they're not dependent on the circumstances or the situation. Like God and Jesus is still the foundation of the church. He's building the church. The Holy spirit has given us and is one of the means by which we get to continue on the mission. And so we're not lacking anything <laughs> for yeah. continuing to grow. So, I mean, I like uh, both of you hit on just kind of honing in on, man, what does your personal discipleship look like right now? If what you're doing now continued, like how, how would that play out in the end? Look at, you know, if you happen to live with someone else or you have a family or whatever, what's it look like for you to, to, to cultivate discipleship within your home and then kind of outward from your neighbors. Like there is no longer this uh, artificial, well, I'm around other people all the time and get to do stuff. And so that kind of fills in some gap or some blank that you have on living in community or, or being like discipled with other people. But like, man, how are you actually going out of your way and carving out time to do that? Because that's, it's easier now than ever has been to just sit back and let time go by and to fill in that space with other stuff. And it's a lot harder right now to, to actually like initiate that and make that happen. So um, yeah. So I think all that is, is good. We should come back out of this, hopefully stronger and with a longing for the things of God and God's people, like, being greater than than we ever had before so any final words or anything to share before we close it up today i've said my final words you said your <laughs> final words were those your final words that final was it. Yeah. yeah okay yeah i'm good too man cool all right guys well uh thanks for joining us if you made it this far in the podcast um yeah we'll do this again sometime soon uh and I mean, what are we doing anyways, right? We're just sitting around in our, <laughs> in our living rooms or our basements or our bedrooms just hanging out. So, you know. Might as well record it. This, Might as well this record looks it. like work. Yeah, this looks like work. We just recorded it. So <laughs> We'd be having this conversation anyway. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Uh, hopefully this was helpful to you in some way, and we'll see you next time. I'm thanks. Good.